Minister, given that the latest Australian Bureau of Statistics data shows a record-breaking 335,184 net arrivals in the first seven months of 2024, surpassing even last year's record by 15,361, how does the government justify continuing its aggressive immigration policy? Can you explain why this government remains blind to severe harm this massive immigration increase is causing the Australian people. Thank you, Senator Hanson. Minister Watt. Uh, thanks, President, and thanks, Senator Hanson. Um, I think any reasonable observer would see the work that has been done by a series of Labor ministers to deal with the higher numbers of migration that Australia has seen since uh, COVID, uh, since we emerged from COVID. The, uh, we all know uh, that immigration essentially disappeared through the COVID pandemic, and we also know that there was a massive rebound in migration numbers post-COVID as we saw students return to Australia, as we saw in some cases Australians return to Australia who had been unable to return, uh, workers as well. Uh, and we made very clear some time ago that we recognised we needed to take action uh, on our migration numbers. And that's why, as I say, the Albanese government has taken action in this regard. Uh, in particular, we've taken a number of measures uh, to reduce the number of international students coming to Australia. I'm, I'm aware that not every part of the community supports that action. Uh, in particular, some universities have got concerns, uh, some vet colleges have got concerns, uh, some political parties have got concerns about that. Uh, but our view was that it was necessary to reach greater balance in terms of our migration numbers, and that was one of the reasons why we undertook those steps. Uh, we've also taken steps such as ending the pandemic event visa, uh, ending unlimited work hours for international students, ending work exemptions for working holiday visa holders. These were all uh, steps that had been taken under the former coalition government that did see a massive increase in the migration numbers that we were seeing in Australia once we, once we emerged from the pandemic. We launched a crackdown on rorts in international education, cracking down on shonky providers and closing loopholes that were being used to bring non-genuine students into the country. Uh, and of course, we've implemented a much broader uh, reform Senator package Henderson. to restore Senator integrity Henderson, to the order. system. Uh, did you conclude your answer? Thank you. Uh, Senator Hanson, first supplementary. I don't think I've got an answer to that one. The Albanese government's first federal budget in October of 2022 projected net overseas migration of 470,000 over its first two years. Instead, Australia has absorbed nearly one million migrants on your watch, doubling the government's own projections. How does the minister explain this consistent failure to adhere to their own misleading immigration targets? Thank you, Senator Hanson. Minister Watt. Um, thanks, President, and thanks, Senator Hanson. As I say, we recognise that post uh, the pandemic, uh, the migration number that Australia was receiving uh, was not sustainable and needed to be dealt with. Uh, and as I say, much of this was the result of policy failures under the coalition government, in particular by Mr Dutton, going back to his time as the Home Affairs Minister. In fact, Mr Dutton, as the Home Affairs Minister, set the all-time record for visas granted, with 9.6 million granted in 2017-18 and more than 9 million for uh, three Minister years, White, running Minister from 2016-17. Senator Hanson. Um, relevance to the question has got nothing to do with the previous government. I'm asking questions about their numbers they brought in the country uh, that have you, increased Senator under Hanson. There their is no watch. Need, there is no need for the statement. You've made the point of order. Uh, the minister is being relevant to your question, and I will continue to listen carefully. Thank you, Minister Watt. Um, thanks, President. Well, as I say, this government has taken a series of steps uh, to ensure that our migration numbers going forward are more sustainable than they have been. Uh, I've already said we ended the pandemic event visa. Uh, we increased the temporary skilled migration income threshold. Uh, very importantly, we restored the immigration compliance function in the Department of Home Affairs, a section that Mr Dutton as the Home Affairs Minister cut by nearly 50 per cent. 
Uh, thank you, Minister. Senator Hanson, second supplementary. After two and a half years, as I said, Minister, you've actually increased the numbers this year, the highest on record. Minister, given the failures of your government to forecast and control immigration numbers, resulting in a million net overseas migrants flooding into the country on your watch, the highest levels in history, will you finally admit your reckless immigration policy is simply a device to cover up Australia's household recession? Uh, thank you, Senator Hanson. Minister Watt. Um, well, I can only repeat the point that this government has taken a series of steps uh, to ensure that our migration numbers are more sustainable than they were emerging from COVID. We fixed a range of policy failures that were left behind by the coalition government and by Mr Dutton, uh, and, they are, that, and they are having some effect. For example, uh, government actions to date have led to substantial declines in migration levels, with student visa grants down by 33.6 per cent this year against the same period last year. So that's a reduction from 428,824 student visa grants in 2022-23, uh, the first year we were elected, to 284,859 grants in 2023-24. Um, I, I don't Senator know why Henderson Senator Henderson is complaining order. about this. Um, Senator Henderson. The, um, so we will continue to take steps. Uh, they are having Minister an effect. Watt, Minister um, but Watt, the please resume your seat. Senator Henderson, I have called you twice. You are being disrespectful towards me. I'm asking that. I'm requesting that you listen in silence. You're not in a debate with me, Senator Henderson. Minister Watt, please continue. Um, so, yeah, we are taking steps to make our migration numbers more sustainable, and we'll keep doing so. Thank you, Minister. Well, today I asked a question of the Minister um, about immigration. Australians know that high immigration figures are actually crippling them. It's crippling them with lack of housing, rental accommodation, infrastructure, roads, um, water, you name it, everything is actually impacting on it. Now, the minister just read out a script that's it's he didn't listen to my question. He wasn't interested. You know why? Because he couldn't answer it. The whole fact is, as I said, in 22, in uh, the government, they came in in May 2022 and they their projected figures was for 470,000 migrants over the first two years. Instead, Australia has absorbed nearly one million migrants under this Labor Party. Now, according to Senator Watt, who answered the question, he said post-COVID, that was 2022, was unsustainable. But they're doing something about it. Well, let me tell the public. The numbers are basically up around the same. This year, what they say, Australia's population grew by 655,800 in the 23-24 financial year. This was up from 647,900 in the March quarter and the second highest annual result in history behind 676,100. Um, recorded in the year to September 2023. Again, Labor. Labor has no intentions of addressing this because why? The country is in hell of a mess economically and they bring in high immigration to prop up the GDP. That's why. And that's why we have a, an issue here in Australia with household recession. High immigration. They don't know how to deal with the economy. They bring in the high immigration numbers. They're lying to the Australian people saying they're addressing this. They are not. It's too late. The damage has been done to this country. Unless we rein in this immigration, people are going to find themselves homeless more so and not being able to buy their own homes in this nation.